Hello, my name is Lena Norms and welcome back to my channel. That was a bit creepy, wasn't it? Hello. Hello. I hope you're ready for a humdinger. Um <laughs> It's been a heavy few weeks on the channel, hasn't it? Everything in moderation, I always say. Give it a break, Lena. Give the people what they want, not what they need for once. What Possibly one of the most requested videos on this channel has been a bookshelf tour. And as you might be able to see from the background of my videos, doesn't seem like a one day chore, does it? Rome cannot be dismantled in a day. But for every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. <laughs> In other words, I'm doing each shelf one by one. If you don't think that sounds fun to you, perhaps you fundamentally misunderstood how similar we are. So for those of you who don't know, I work in publishing. It means that I get a lot of books for free, not because I am this person, but because I've worked within various publishing houses and you either just get to take books home for free or you get given them because you're working on a campaign, lots of different reasons. So the other side of working in publishing is that you most likely live in London. And if you're under 30 living in London, you move a lot and nowhere you move has enough space for all the books that you want. up with is to probably what a lot of other people would consider a huge amount of books. It's not a lot compared to a lot of the other booktubers I watch and my policy is I only keep books that I intend to read, have just read, have read and will legitimately have the time and requirement to read again and really well made books for reference for when one day I get a book deal and then I can bring them all in under my shoulders and be like guys I'm thinking something like this and then spreading them all out in front of the design team and the design team probably being like fuck you Lena don't tell ourselves to do our jobs and I'll be like fair fair um so yeah they're the three reasons that I have books which means that actually a lot of the books that I own at the moment I haven't read <laughs> And that's a good thing. I think it's sad to have loads of books that are that ha or have already been read sitting on people's shelves and never to be read again. I like to keep the flow of books smooth and I give a lot of books away to the Gumption Club, which is a Patreon only group I run and which you can join for as little as a dollar per thing. So to feed your curiosity, I'm gonna go through every single book. You'll see that my books are color coded. I don't, I don't really care if you think that makes me a basic bitch Tumblr girl. It looks neater on the eye. Because I predominantly own books I haven't read, I only really usually know them by the colour, it's actually the easiest way for me to find them. I don't know by heart every single author surname and I think they look nice together because I really fucking love the design of books as well as what's inside of them. So in this ongoing video series I'm going to go through every single colour and tell you what books I have from them. Um, I, I enjoy watching these videos because I love looking at book design, I think it's interesting especially with people who are offered a lot of books, what they genuinely keep and I hope that you discover books that you might not have heard of before because I don't think that my books shelf looks a lot like an average Waterstones. I think it's a massive collection of like independent booksellers, unusual books, new writers, very old writers. I hope that while I can't stop at every book and tell you exactly what is in it, you'll get some good ideas. And every episode I'm gonna pick about three books that I really do want to talk to you about that I can talk to you about in more depth. I love a yellow book. Yellow book means self-help happiness, quirky maverick non-fiction book, or literary book that's bored of being perceived as a literary book. That's what I see when I see the colour yellow. And I'm the book whisperer, so you should trust me. So let's go over to my bookshelf to discover my yellow books. So here's our bookshelves in their entirety. A very brief tour is Craig stuff, Craig stuff, Craig's weird music stuff. Who likes music? Anyway, more board games than we have friends. Zines, so many zines still. I think there might be about 400 left. Zine packing material, the red shelf, the black shelf, another black shelf. Nina really likes black books. Blue, 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 greeny blue and some mixed, some green, some orange, some pink and purple, some gold and beige, grey, and the yellow shelf. Here's our yellow shelf. They call me yellow mellow, quite rightly. Starting right to left, like my teenage politics. Uh, <laughs> I've got this collector's edition of Greta Thunberg's No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference, which I haven't actually read yet, but I'm really excited to read. Uh, this was sent to me by the publishers and it's got the original sign that she had when she first started striking embossed on the back. Thanks, Alan Lane. Doo -doo -doo. Next up, we've got Viper Wine, which is kind of like a snotty green cover, but I love it. It's actually one of my favorite book covers ever. I have never read this book, but look at it. If I get books published, I want them to look like this. I like zany 80s meets 
national portrait gallery aesthetic definitely i've got quite a lot of these around so you'll probably see these in a lot of videos uh, but i used to work for this publisher called icon and i used to do a lot of work on the introducing series which are graphic guides to big ideas uh, so this one is freud who i used to do a lot of modules on at uni and i like to refer to every now and then even though i kind of think that he's wrong but it's important to be able to reference people who are wrong when you know that you're right. This is 10 uses for a dead Kindle when I was way more against Kindles than I used to be and I was gonna make a video acting out all of the ideas in this book for like what you can use Kindles for <laughs> that isn't reading. <laughs> Um, but I never got around to it, but do let me know if that is something you're still interested in because I would 100% act some of these out. Maybe not that one. That one, we can leave out. <laughs> I want to pass my CRB checks in the future. This one, I support. I mean, maybe I'll just make a recycling video just about Kindles. Anyway, this one is The Convenience Store Woman. I read this a couple of years ago and talked about it. I'll link it in the show notes. Another opening, another show. Um, but this is an excellent translated book uh, all about the mechanics of capitalism and being a woman in a traditional society. Incredible. This is a York Notes copy of The Handmaid's Tale because I led a round the table discussion about Margaret Atwood's new book, The Testaments and uh, the impact of The Handmaid's Tale. And I was with some clever people like Helen Lewis and uh, people that I was very intellectually intimidated by. So I thought I'd like brush up on my knowledge of The Handmaid's Tale with this. This is a beautiful copy of Brian Andreas Travelling Light. I don't think I've ever talked about Brian Andreas on my channel before, but he's one of my favorite like weird idea poet people who like illustrates all of his own poems and they're all like really sweet. I found his stuff in a random shop in Sacramento when I lived in um, the US for a couple of months and it was amazing. I never see anybody talk about him so maybe I should some more. This is a book that when I was really interested in running I wanted to read and haven't admitted to myself that I like for some reason I've fallen out of love with running but this is about the philosophy fuck's sake. But this is about the philosophy of running and why we like it. Uh, so I guess if I want to get into running again and feel safe. Also, ugh, winter running for women in Britain, it's not the one. Um, I just never feel safe. It's always dark. So maybe in the summer I'll try and read this and start running again because I did enjoy it at some point in my life. Uh, this is a book that is spine only yellow, but it does belong here, I suppose. Um, I just bought this and it's one that I'm going to read all about vegan life because I don't understand it <laughs> or how to do it. What am vegan? So hopefully this will help me. This is a book I got from a charity shop um, that I want to read when I do my positive panic episode on clothes, which I've half filmed already, but I want to read this before I make the rest of it and draw conclusions. So that's on the to-do list, I guess. This is Craig's book. I've never read it. <laughs> Although I do like Kazuru Shiguru. This is also Craig's book. I have read it. It was really good. I don't need to tell you about Never Let Me Go. Come on. My friend Dottie, you might watch her here. She's called Dottie James. She loves Terry Pratchett and I wanted to start Terry Pratchett so I asked her which book I should start with and she said this one so I bought it. <laughs> I think we were together. I can't remember. And um, yeah, I really want to get around to it. I just haven't yet. But there's lots of books this year that I'm trying to get around to. Like for instance, I have only just read Northern Lights by Philip Pullman so give a bitch a chance. But I'm definitely gonna try Terry Pratchett at some point. I just wanna know, I just wanna know. Um, this is a book about publishing that I haven't read, but I like to collect books on publishing so that one day I can be the ultimate, I can make the ultimate guide to publishing, books about publishing. Um, this one is by Jean-Paul Doudien. Uh, and I think it's a translation. This is Crushing It, which I've dipped into lots and lots. Um, Lex Croucher is one of my friends and this is amazing. This is a proof. It's comforting and refreshing and I like all the typography in it. Uh, so I keep this one around so I can dip into it. Go through one of the many topics that plague me and let Lex help me with it without emotionally draining her for on-demand advice. <laughs> This is How To Be A Poet, a book that I've talked about um, and I haven't read yet but I'm excited to. This is a book Dear Zealots by Amos Oz. Amos Oz died recently uh, which is again you know the horrible fate of humanity but like how I heard about him and uh, he's written a lot about the Israeli-Palestine conflict which I'm really interested in and this is a really short um, essay about it uh, that I would like to read. This was bought by the Lena who secretly still wants to go to drama school and thinks that if she learns enough monologues for women she'll be 20 again and want to and have the money and uh, privilege and talent too. So every now and then this Lena buys a book like this and you'll see these around and for some reason I keep buying them even though 
I have another life now, let it go. This is one of my favourite short story collections, it's called Elementals by A.S. Byatt and I highly recommend you pick it up. I can't believe that a human wrote this, it's so well written, it's beautiful. Uh, it's published by Virago, who are a feminist independent press I believe and yeah, that's like the moment I was like, oh my god, I think I like short stories. I think it's Girl on the Colour is also having that revelation. Oh my god, I like short stories! This book is a children's book. It's called Amazing Babes. I talked about it about five or six years ago, but I keep it around because I love it. It's kind of like before um, Good Night Good Stories for Rebel Girls was famous. Uh, it's really short sentences about famous women in history that are either really well known or have been like forgotten for some unjust reasons for a much younger age group um, than Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, uh, but I like the fact that it also has this big information thing at the back so adults who are reading it to children can learn about the stuff alongside uh, just the very simple sentences. So I really recommend that if you have like a small toddler. This is world history for dummies! I actually started reading this, bless me, and taking notes on it because I just felt really ignorant about five years ago and I do intend to go through it, like I highlighted loads of it and was like I want to learn this, but turns out quite a lot and need more time. Uh, do not have time to invent a PhD on world history and then teach myself it over our night. Duh. Aim high, Lena, aim high. James and the Giant Peach, because everybody needs a copy of this just in case. I'm actually listening to uh, an audiobook of this read by uh, Roald Dahl at the moment, but I've read this book lots of times and it's definitely inspired some of my own writing and I love it. The Miss. Off. Oh, Why? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> I'm calm. Um, this is The Misfit Economy, Lessons in Creativity from Pirates, Hackers, Gangsters and other info- Oh my god, do you know what, I might get round to reading this this week. Come on, come on, it's time. I saw this woman speak at a conference in Edinburgh and I loved what she had to say and I'm trying to- I'm going to try and find the talk and link it below, um, but I should get round to this and you know what, when I was listening to this talk and then a couple of years later this book, Be More Pirate, came out, um, who's written by a really cool man called Sam, who, who is very cool, but it really reminded me of the premise of this book by a woman and was a bit like, I was a bit like, um, uh. so I don't know if they are very similar. I have read Be More, Be More Pirate and I thought it was incredible, it was on my top 10 books of 2018, um, so I should read this because it sounds amazing and probably something I need right now. Do you ever have a thing where you like get hold of a book and you're like, I will need this at some point, I will need to hear this soon, and then you get to that point and you're like, yep, Now's the time. Craftivist Collective yearbook, uh, and also to go with it, How to Be a Craftivist, which is one of my favourite books of 2018. My friend um, Sarah Corbett wrote it, she was on my podcast, she talks about the art of gentle protest and not shouting at people and why that's effective and amazing, and we need introverts in the activism space, I would highly recommend it. This is Homecoming, which is a book I read last year, which is so good, and I, I actually listened to the audiobook in the end, so actually I'm going to give this book away to the Gumption Club now. Uh, it served its purpose, but it's really, really good. Actually, okay, this is one of the ones I want to talk about. This is Athel Hirsch's Brit-ish on race, identity and belonging. If you haven't heard about this book, where have you been? Uh, you Had Better Make Some Noise, Words to Change the World uh, is a pull-out book of quotes about protests and stuff, so I have actually been pulling these out and sticking them around my flat, but it's a really nice gift, it's a really nice reminder to yourself. Uh, I've been trying to learn by heart some of the um, sayings in it because they're really helpful and, and much more complex than just like, save the world, peace and love man! Treats! Another one of my favourite um, short story collections, I'll link where I've talked about this below, but what a, what a masterpiece, love this. <laughs> the Highway Code, a classic. Fun fact, eight driving instructors and three driving tests later, I can't fucking drive! This is the medallion that keeps the faith for me. I want to read this, but I haven't. All of the School of Life books I have ever read have been really, really great, so I've just been keeping this one in case I have time to make a home. <laughs> I haven't read this. It sounds good though, doesn't it? I would like to write better copy. God damn it, Lena. Um, Nancy Tucker has been on my channel before. Um, I did the publicity for this book, The Time In Between, right at the beginning of my publishing career. Um, this is an incredible memoir uh, about anorexia. It's written in a really clever, um, insightful way, uh, and she wrote this book when she was 19 years old. What? And then this is uh, Freakery, Cultural Spectacles of Extraordinary Bodies, and it's all about um, the way body is treated in writing and in media, and um, why we need to look at it more complexly, and the fucked up ways we treat 
um, different functioning bodies and one that needs to change. I've read quite a few essays in this, I haven't read the whole thing but I was writing essays on it for my masters and I'm so interested in it as a concept and circuses and spectacle, uh, how that's affected the way people are portrayed. So I can't completely recommend this book because I haven't read all of it but it's a textbook that I'm like, you know when I do that fictional PhD I've always wanted to do? That's when I'll use this. <laughs> So now you see my shelves. I picked three books. Two of them weren't actually on the yellow shelf, which means more surprises for you. Uh, I realised they were hanging out on the wrong shelves and it was very embarrassing. Um, so I've got two books that I've read and one book that I haven't. The first book that I've read is Tales from Outer Suburbia uh, by Sean Tan. I've lent this to a lot of people over the years. I absolutely love it. Uh, it's kind of for children, but not really. It's um, Sean Tan's a very talented um, writer who illustrates his own work. Or he's an illustrator that writes about his own work. But he writes these one to two page stories with huge spreads of illustrations in between. Strange and dark and make you think about the nature of humanity. And they're also just like really good explorations of, of imagination. You know when some people say that like kids books are imaginative and they've just got like wizards and robots and I don't know like magic footballs in them. I'm always disappointed because what I think of imagination is this. It's like my favourite one in this collection is really short. Can I read it to you? You're here already. You've already watched a video just literally of a girl pulling books out of her bookshelf. So I'm, I'm sure you're on board by now. When I was a kid, there was a big water buffalo living in the vacant lot at the end of our street. The one with the grass no one ever mowed. He slept most of the time and ignored everybody who walked past, unless we happened to stop and ask him for advice. Then he would come up to us slowly, raise his left hoof and literally point us in the right direction. He never said what he was pointing at or how far it would go or what we were supposed to do once we got there. And in fact, he never said anything because buffaloes are like that. They hate talking. This was too frustrating for most of us. By the time anyone thought to consult the buffalo, our problem was usually urgent and required a straightforward and immediate solution. Eventually, we stopped visiting him altogether and I think he went away some time after that. All we could see was long grass. It's a shame, really, because whenever we had followed his pointy hoof, we'd always been surprised, relieved and delighted at what we found. And every time we'd said the same thing. How did he know? Um, and then there's also this short story called Eric about um, this creature called Eric who comes to live with them and it's a kind of metaphor about refugees and it's really clever and he hides in teapots and plants flowers and it's amazing. So this is one of my favourite books on the yellow shelf that now belongs on the yellow shelf. How did you get away? The second one is Homecoming by Colin Grant, uh, Voices of the Windrush Generation. This was actually on my specially mentioned of, of 2019 and I actually had to cut it from the video because the video was so bloody long and I could only include the top 10. But this was definitely one of my special mentions. I listened to an audiobook originally and I'm gonna include my rant about that from my last video that I had to cut here. Beautifully crafted non-fiction book by this incredible historian Colin Grant who I interviewed on the Vintage Podcast actually uh, and he has compiled this pretty much verbatim first-hand interview collection. It's over a hundred interviews uh, from the Windrush generation. Men and women who came to Britain from the West Indies between the 1940s and the 1960s. Parts of it that I really had no idea I didn't even know about, like the you know the, the you know you don't know, like I know that I don't know what it's like to move to a different country where people are predominantly going to be racist towards you, be part of the Windrush generation, move to a different country um, and experience everything that comes with being of the Windrush generation. But also there's loads of stuff I didn't know I I wouldn't have known to look up, which is why I think books like this are really important and books in general are important rather than just Googling random terms, uh, is the the way they learn about Britain in the West Indies before coming over, um, the, the reputation of Britain, the, the way they were brought up to really invest in their status as British and see um, Britain as, as the centre of their ecosystem of countries and how um, shattering it was to come to Britain and, and have those um, perceptions dashed. The heritage and the history behind the Notting Hill Carnival, um, the concept of carnival in general and what it means to people from the West Indies. It also has some interviews with white people who were spectating on this at this point, either people who are old now and felt hesitant about it at the time, and um, people who um, were in interracial relationships and, and stuff like that. And it's just so, it gives you a really like 360 view um, of that time period and how, also how different each person feels within that strata of people who we call the Windrush generation. And, and at, towards the end of the book, a reflection on the Windrush scandal and, and what that really means for the future of Britain and how we've changed our feelings about race, but also haven't. Anyway, I think it's really interesting and also a really good read if you um, feel disconnected with the history of Britain and um, the way you were taught it, especially with um, relation to the recent general election.
Um, because what I think is interesting about this book, and I was I'm talking to my um, godmother um, over Christmas. My godmother is uh, 94 and she's French and she lived through the um, Nazi occupation in Paris. And it's incredible that she's still here and she's still um, alive. And so are a lot of the people uh, that are that came through um, on the Windrush and also the people who were around the people who came off the boat at Windrush and how they treated them. Those people are still alive. A lot of them are still voting. Um, the people that are, that are so horrifically racist of that period of time that I think of as ancient history, of black and white, of the, belongs to a sepia kind of Britain. Um, they're still here. They're still voting. We shouldn't be surprised um, that they still, they're still around. Um, it's not actually that long ago. And knowing that those people um, are alive, as well as the, the people whose voices are in the book, the, the winter generation is very... Uh, interesting and uh, like a painful truth but it makes more sense to me that the vote ended up the way it did am i making any sense <laughs> it's heartbreaking but it's also really great and funny and it brings out their personalities and it's so warm and um i just i just love that book so that is an honorable mention um because these experiences are important uh, and also the racists are still alive and also it's also the children the children that grew up with those people and were never told that it was wrong and watched their grandparents do these horrific things to people of the windows generation and and be violent towards them i like those children grew up and didn't get re-educated um and it really fucking annoys me as you can tell from my gesticulations and then my third book is how should a person be by sheila hetty um this is a book that i haven't read but i really want to i absolutely adored motherhood i think it was one of the texts that changed my life uh, motherhood is a book all about the choice to be a mother um from a, from a philosophical perspective from an honest human perspective from a raw can you do art and still give your life to another um unknown human it's such a transformative fictional memoir and i loved it and how should a person be is more her exploring who she is and her personality and 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 how to construct a personality it's so up my street that i was almost scared to read it because everybody was like lena you'd love this book uh, and i hate when people say that because it gets my hopes up really high and i don't want my heart broken so i haven't actually read this book yet but i'd really love to um and let me know if any of you in the comments have read it before because i'd love to know thank you for coming to my yellow books ted talk um did you enjoy this video? Do you want this to be a series? Did, was that boring to you? I can't tell anymore. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't been here before, I've got lots more book content in this playlist. These videos are available for free if you'd like to support them and help make them possible. You can join the Gumption Club where you can also add me on Goodreads and get free on-demand book recommendations for me wherever you are in the world. I'm going to be giving this book away this week in the Gumption Club. So do join if you want to be in with a chance of winning. What colour would you like me to do next? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in my next one. Frogsnog out.